fact, for me, jam has become a standard in uh, international best practices. It's better off than before it was man no man in admission. I think it's better now. We believe that if other agencies can also copy from what we are doing, a lot of money will be saved for federal government. It's been a phenomenal era in the life of the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, a body established in 1978 to conduct examinations and harmonize admissions into the universities in Nigeria. The past few years have indeed been amazing with outstanding developments that have seen the growth and transformation of JAM from just a local examination body to an internationally acclaimed institution with visible achievements hinged on reforms in policies and administration. This is the new face of JAM. And it is anchored on the restoration of the institution to the path of growth and integrity. Jam, I would say, is actually our pride. As a government, Jam, as an institution, makes us proud. In fact, time was when admission into Nigerian universities was riddled with controversies bordering on allegations of irregularities and fraud. I think it's better now because Jam has introduced a new system known as CBT, that's this um, computer-based test, which has helped tremendously to uplift credibility and fairness as regard to admission issues. I believe that with the present state of things now in JAMP, we are moving back to the original standard, that candidates are to be administered into institutions of learning based on how qualified they were during the conduct of the exams. The high rate of uh, my practice is being reduced. I think it's better off than before it was man no man in admission. Well, while it might be difficult to insulate JAMP from controversy, being an institution in the public eye, the conversation now is more about a strict admission policies and measures than it is about favoritism and malpractices. I, I, I would like to tell parents that the standards that uh, JAM uh, has come up with can only be good for our country. It can only be good for the educational system, can only be good for the quality of intakes into university. Because the quality determines, the quality of intakes determines the quality of graduates that will come out later. So what JAM is doing can only be good for the students and uh, it will also then by extension be good for the parents because parents wouldn't waste time and money on the students that are not inclined to learn. But by the time you go through the strict regimen of JAM, it will be good for everyone. Both as a student that passed through JAM and now, as a public servant and as a chief executive of a federal institution, I think I'm in a position to say JAM has indeed come a long way historically. A new era of sanity and credibility in the admission process has dawned on Nigeria. And Professor Ishak Oloyede, who emerged registrar in 2016, is the champion of the new order and hero of business or usual in JAM. If Mr. President had given me the power to resign and give the ministership to someone, I would have done it to already. Each time I meet him, 
and I still met him two days ago. I said, Prof, thanks for making us proud. That's what I tell him. We have a registrar who, who came on board and felt that Jam can do everything. He looked at the capacity, he looked at the staff, and felt that with proper training, with proper perspective, with proper technology, we can do what other people are doing for us. Whoever is ready to do business with him must do things the way he feels that it should be done. His coming on board have really improved the quality of services of Jam. There have been a lot of improvement. It's obvious that since 2000, I think 2016 when he came on board, there have been a lot of radical changes and improvement. Radical changes on the positive side. I can tell you that I'm aware that jam results normally come out now within a few hours, 48 hours or thereabout after the normal examination. It won't take up to one week. Unlike before when we have to wait for months. And there is also a lot of openness in the system of administration. Everything is online. In fact, for me, JAM has become a standard in uh, international best practices. He is a man of integrity. He is an academic to the core. He is a very religious person. Uh, one time, he told us a story that when he was appointed, there were a lot of people that were castigating the government for uh, appointing him. But having come closer to him and work with him, I have found him to be an exceptionally brilliant person all round. I cannot, as of today, find anybody who will bring the kind of innovation that Oloide has brought into JAM. The President of this has come, he has made JAM where it is, and he has taken it to the next level. And our prayer is that by the time the next thing is leaving, maybe in the next 10, ten years, the next register will also consolidate on his achievement and also take that to the next level. In a bold step that signals the arrival of the new sheriff with the change mantra, Jam set an unequaled record of transparency among public institutions in Nigeria by remitting over 5 billion naira into the coffers of the federal government in 2017 and an additional 7 billion naira from the 2020 UTMA exercise. With JAM's unbeaten record, we now have an unassailable proof that transparency in Nigeria's public institutions is indeed possible. JAM has the applause and the acclamation of government at the highest level because this remittance was discussed at the Federal Executive Council and the President had good words for JAM. All ministers who were at the meeting and who made uh, contributions to that discussion that day had good words for JAM. From 2017, there have been a dramatic improvement in JAM's fulfillment of obligation of remittances to the Consolidated Revenue Funds of the Federal Government in line with the provisions of Fiscal Responsibility Act. It is obvious that in 2007, JAM remitted over 3 billion, much more than that. In 2018, they also upped the ante. JAM has continued to improve that today, I can tell you, as the Chief Executive of Fiscal Responsibility Commission, that JAM is one of the few scheduled corporations that are up and doing in their efforts to fully comply with the provisions of the Act. Not just in, in remittance of operating surplus, JAM has also improved in their presentation of their audited accounts. In the last three years that I have been on, on, on the subject of the leadership of JAM, JAM has been able to remit back to the federal government coffers over 21 billion naira through the technology that he has introduced. He has brought in more inclusiveness, 
but it has reduced the cost of doing business. And we believe that if other agencies can also copy from what we are doing, a lot of money will be saved for federal government for other needy responsibilities. Thank you. For Nigeria to progress, a collective resolution to address corruption and foster broad-based prosperity is required to create a country which is not only for a few privileged, but for all Nigerians. The emergence of President Muhammad Buhari in 2015 set the stage for a no-nonsense administration with zero tolerance for corruption in Nigeria. When you consider the track record of that organization under the current leadership, the registrar, the amount of funds generated, amount remitted into government coffers compared with the past, the transparency that has been enthroned and uh, the, the quality of uh, their, their exams in terms of supervision and uh, thoroughness now. I think JAMB is a pride to this government. JAMB exemplifies all that President Muhammad Buhari stands for. With the President's declaration of war against Lees, the board of JAMB, led by Dr. Emmanuel Ndukwe, appeared to have had his job clearly cut out for it. This government President Mohamed Buhari's government came into being with the mantra anti-corruption, economy, and security. So we, we in the board of JAMP followed that, especially that aspect of anti-corruption by doing everything we do by due process to it our coming we focus on anti-corruption and you can see that it's telling by the performance of JAM. In his quest to curb malpractices practices and enthrone the culture of credible examinations that meet international standards, JAM is deploying and reaping the benefits of modern technology in the processes leading to the examinations, the conduct of the exercise, and a harmonized system of admissions that promotes merit and excellence. From 2017, we also introduced a lot of innovation to improve on the system. Today, we have a CCTV camera in each center, in each hall, strategically located to monitor what is happening at the center before the examination, during the examination. So in such a way that even when my parties are perpetrated and they are not seen during the examination, after the examination, when we are monitoring the CCTV camera, we discover what's happened at those centers and such centers are penalized. And because candidates are also aware that they are being monitored, we're not only monitoring from the center, we're also remotely monitoring from the headquarters in such a way that we see what is happening right from Abuja at all the seven or something centers that we have across the nation. So that has also improved and also in, in, uh, increased the credibility of the examination. We introduced biometric uh, capturing of candidates, which has also eliminated impersonation and other modes of uh, infraction that comes with the content of examination globally generally. So we, over the period of time from 2015 till date, we have introduced a lot of innovation that has made the Nigerian CBT, when I mean the Nigerian CBT, that's looking at the context of what, 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 what we're doing in our country, one of the best globally. The introduction of the use of the National Identification Number NIN, Computer-Based Test CBT, and CAPS are initiatives aimed at enhancing the credibility of the joint matriculation examinations and the admission processes. CBT is the Computer-Based Test Examination, which came into being after discovery of so many challenges associated with the paper and pencil examination. And the board felt that a system should be introduced that will also automate the conduct of examination. That was how CBT came into being. Now, after the conduct of the examination, the major role the board plays 
is the admission exercise. And if transparency is not introduced into the admission exercise, there will be suspicion and people will be dissatisfied with the process. So CAPS came into being to also complement the achievement that CBT had also brought to bear on the functions or mandates given to the board. So with the introduction of the two, the two technologies, a lot has been achieved. CBT has eliminated exam and practice to a barest minimum. CAPS has also eliminated all infraction associated with admission, either by the institution or other parties as a result of the manual exercise that was done before. Now it is automated, no other interferences. Once you cannot even change the goalpost in the middle of the game, once institution key in what is their requir requirement, you cannot change it. And whoever is qualified is qualified. NIM is established to be in charge of anything that has to do with biometrics. So, and Federal Security Council, the law authorizes NIM to be in charge of anything that has to do with biometric identification. We were directed to comply with that law. However, beside the Federal Executive Directive, we also felt that that was the way to go. That if this particular responsibility is taken off our shoulders, it will address a lot of challenges that has to do with biometrics identity, identity management. That was why we felt that, okay, let us take advantage of this law for us to also enjoy this privilege because they have the capacity to do biometric matching. What that means is that once you register a candidate, like this year now, we register over 1.9 million candidates. Each candidate will be matched against the other candidate. Candidate one, candidate one will be matched against 1.9 million arms for other candidates to see if there are multiple registrations. So that was why we wanted to take advantage of. But unfortunately, Nigerians didn't really cooperate the way we wanted. When we announced we were going to do that, some of them felt maybe we were not serious. Until when it became obvious that yes, Jam was serious with what they are going to do. And all candidates, everybody came out at the same time. And coming out at the same time caused a lot of challenges on logistics from the agency. In his desire to guard against infractions that could mar the integrity of the examinations, the board collaborates with the law enforcement agencies to provide security and ensure prosecution of candidates and officials who cheat or go contrary to the rules of the examinations. Computer-based test centers that go contrary to the rules also come under the sledgehammer of JAM. In fact, cases of infractions by operators of these facilities are summarily dealt with and appropriate sanctions meted out to ensure discipline. In a move expected to serve as deterrent to others, about nine centers cutting across many states in the country were delisted for various offenses committed during the 2020 UTME. Many of them were uh, delisted due to inadequacy of their facility uh, technical failures and uh, technical failure and also very minimal number of them were involved in exam uh, malpractice but majority of them were delisted due to technical inadequacy and uh, JAMB is considering uh, such ones that were delisted by the technical inadequacy, they have to upgrade and do the test run. If they are found to meet the standard, they will definitely be reappointed. Once we fortify our registration exercise, we would have reduced drastically incidences of malpractice before even the examination. By the time we get to the examination, with other security features that we've introduced, the CCTV camera, the verification before you go into the examination hall. So we would have gone ahead because we believe that we don't share this idea of running after criminals. The philosophy of the board is that look, prevention is better than cure. We eliminate all incidences of infraction before the conduct of the examination in such a way that even when there are incidents of my parties at the point of the conduct of examination, they are very, very, very minimal. They are just isolated cases that one can really look at and address frontally. As a compassionate and socially responsible institution relevant to the society it serves, 
The Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board traditionally identifies and responds to the needs and aspirations of the people. With the COVID-19 pandemic ravaging the world and disrupting the social and economic life of Nigerians, JAM has risen to the occasion by supporting the efforts of the federal government to contain the spread of coronavirus through the provision of ventilators and kits for the treatment of patients and protection of medical personnel on the front lines. As the reputation of Nigerian universities continues to soar in the global community, the clamor for admission by diaspora Nigerians and foreigners also continues to rise. Having served and conquered the local environment as an exemplary national monument, JAMP is going beyond the shores to provide opportunities to Nigerians in the diaspora to seat for joint matriculation examination in their countries of residence. For now, we have uh, centers outside the shores of Nigeria. There are centers in uh, Kotonou, Ghana, uh, UK. There are also plans to expand the diaspora centers for JAM exams. It's already in process. In the years ahead, more countries in parts of the world will be accommodated in the arrangement. It's been over 40 years since the journey began. The board of JAM is said to bequeath an enduring legacy to Nigeria. Our legacy as a board will be to uplift the standard and quality of educational assessments. The quality of assessment, the integrity of examinations, determines is a determinant factor of the quality of candidates that go into the universities. And in the long run, it also determines the quality of specialists and experts and research that is done in tertiary institutions. This board will be happy to be remembered with all the innovations, integrity, caps, and, and technological uh, uh, development in educational assessment. To safeguard the integrity of the examination and admission processes, the board constantly evolves measures and means to shield the public from fraudsters. JAMP website is functional and provides all information about the institution.